God, standing on the promise that cannot fail. Then we will take the next message, the promised revival outpouring in the last days. So media, please help us. Oh! 
Amen. We will stand on the promises of God in Jesus' name. Media, the next message. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer as the media give us the next message? Let's talk to God that he will give us his promised revival. He will pour onto us so for us also to do exploit in our time. Here we are today for the final thing. Let me tell you my secret. Many years ago, after I was saved, I wanted to preach to people. I didn't understand what it will take. And God showed me a revelation. I saw multitudes of people. And in that revelation, I was wearing my best clothes. At that time, we called the shirt double two. And I saw myself addressing crowds. I didn't understand. So I went on living my Christian life, reading my Bible, and praying to be a good believer, good Christian. All of a sudden, there were many other Christian activities I concentrated on, and I was glued to them. And nothing could take it from me or take them from me. But all of a sudden, I saw that all those activities I was into, they were not um, reaching any soul. I enjoyed them. But it didn't make me profitable to the kingdom. And so all of a sudden, I found myself praying to God. Saying, oh Lord, I abandon all these good things, but not productive. And I concentrated on prayer and on some models of the evangelistic outreach. I had studied mathematics at the university, and I know how I studied to make a first class in mathematics in my uh, first degree. So I came across one book, Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne. And I took that book as if I was in the mathematics class. I read it. I studied it. I marked it. If you see that first copy now of Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne, it's almost torn apart. But after some years, I got a new copy. And I studied and I read. After some years, I got another copy. And then, but I had not started evangelizing or praying for the sick. Then some of the Bible study members in our Bible study then, they will see me at the university because I was still lecturing. They said, good morning, sir. I said, how did you know me? He said, I came to the Bible study. And I was very sick. And while you were preaching, just teaching Bible study, I got healed. I said, what? I said, tell me, tell me, tell me the truth. I said, true. Another time, somebody came to the Sunday service. And um, you, I was praying. And then I had myself saying what I didn't plan to say. I said, that woman there was the evil spirit. I command the evil spirit, come out there. And the Lord opened the eyes of the woman. She had been having demonic spirit controlling her life for 18 years. And the Lord opened her eyes and the spirit came out. But when it came out, it stayed in one place. I didn't see anything. And I didn't plan to say what I was saying. I said, evil spirit, keep on moving, don't stay there. I said, go out of that place. The members of the church, they have been wondering, what's it, what's it saying today? But the Lord opened the eyes of that woman, and that spirit kept on moving until it went out. And I said, don't come back here. And then we were to have the first stadium crusade in Lagos. I had just two cassettes of Maurice Cerullo. And for weeks before that crusade, I would listen to that, to those two messages of Maurice Cerullo. I'd listen in the day, I'd listen in the night. I put the message there, and while I'm sleeping, it's still playing. I saturated my mind, my spirit of those two messages. And then the day came. Or the crusade. 
Remember, all I had within me was the message I'd heard. And the only way I can think is on the message I heard. So we got there. I want to pray. I made the altar call. The people responded. I was not to pray for the sick in a way I had never, never done. While we were praying, we had not said the final amen. I was still praying and praying and praying. Oh Lord, heal the sick. At the middle of the prayer, a woman, a mother began to shout. What happened? Her son, a boy, did not have any bone in one leg, only flesh. And he, will, he had one good leg and one flesh rubber leg. He will use one stick and wind the flesh uh, that had no bone. He would uh, wind it around that uh, stick. In the middle of the prayer, he threw away the stick. God created bone in that leg. I was still praying. And the boy began to run and to jump on both legs with bulls. When we finished prayer, that woman jumped, that woman cried, that woman laughed, that woman danced, did everything to say, God, am ever you. I tell you my story so that that story will be reproduced in your life. Don't think you cannot. You can. You will. Your own day has started today. Today, we're not going to preach, talk, talk, talk much. Take all these messages you have heard. Like I took the book of Taylor's Bond. And the messages, the cassettes of Maurice Serolo. And I listened and listened and listened. And all that is said in those messages, they were transferred into my heart. Get the messages. These ministerial messages, professional messages. Listen to them. Don't worry whether you get anything in your own mind on them or not. Just listen. Because our children, when they are born, we don't send them to school when they are one month old. They stay with Papa and Mama. And Papa and Mama, they are talking together. And the child is just listening. He cannot say what they are saying. He cannot construct the sentences like they are constructing. But the child keeps on listening to Papa and Mama. Before the child goes to school, he's so already speaking the language fluently. Because he has been listening and listening and listening. Listen and you will learn. Today, a new day is coming on you. What you found impossible in the past will become possible. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters, all our ministers, all our professionals. You brought them here for a purpose. That purpose will be fulfilled. Make champions out of your people here. Raise giants of faith out of your people here. Let the enemy clear away from their side in Jesus' name. Throw my son there, throw my daughter there. Begin to do the impossible in their ministries. Open their hearts to receive. Open their eyes to see. They will go to the length and breadth of this country, neighboring countries, other countries, to manifest the power of God in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Do it, Lord. Be with them. Walk with them. Evangelize through them. Confirm your miracle upon every life. 
In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we're coming to the final message of the series where that are dealing with revival in the last days. The long awaited revival. And praise the Lord, it's happening in our time. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. We're looking at the promised revival outpouring in these last days. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, for the promises unto you. The doctor is holding the big bottle. And he's saying the liquid here that will take away your blindness, your dimness, and will give you bright 2020 vision is in this big bottle. Go wash your little bottle. Go cleanse your little bottle. Be washed and be cleansed. And I'll pour my spirit upon you. In these last days, look at verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far, far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Three things we're looking at in the message today. The word and the spirit in his saints. Number two, the working of the spirit through his servants. Number three, our willingness and zeal by the spirit. Look at number one. In the word and the spirit in his servants. The spirit of God works with the scriptures from God. The spirit of God works with the scriptures from God. That's why we should have the internalizing of the word with the spirit. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up his standard against him then in verse 20 it says and the redeemer shall come to zion and shall come unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Then in verse 21, it says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. Look at this, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, my spirit and my word. The word of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord working together. If, if the word is not there, the spirit does not know what instrument, what weapon you have to work. You have the word, you have the spirit. Remember, you must wash your little bottle and cleanse your little bottle. The words, the words who have been hearing, the words who have been speaking, words of unbelief and words of doubt and words of deception, all those words must wash them out, cleanse them out, and then the words of the eternal will be brought in. You must cleanse your bottle. All the words of tradition and the words of the nation and the words of human beings and the words that will not develop faith in you, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the words of the Lord. All the other kinds of word must be washed out, must be cleansed out before the word that develops faith will take root in your life. You must wash, wash that little bottle of all the other words you have been used to. And in the word of the Lord alone will take effect and be mighty and powerful in your life, in your ministry. The word that will forget the word of the past. The word that will take away the words of society, the words of sinfulness, and the words of Satan out of your life, and everything is washed, your bottle, everything is cleansed, your bottle, and the word of the Lord takes supremacy in your heart and in your life. Now the spirit, the spirit, it says, my words and my spirit, which I put inside you, the spirit controls actions, 
must, if it's the evil spirit, it must get out of you. Ah, I'm a believer. Since I'm a believer, how can the action of the devil, action of Satan, influence of Satan, and the control of Satan be in my life? You remember Peter? Jesus had spoken. He too had spoken. And the Lord had said, flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you about my Father who is in heaven. And so Jesus began to reveal the might of the Father. And, say, and uh, Satan now came to influence Peter. And he said, that shall not be. What did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. He yielded to the influence and the control of Satan. Now, we must wash that bottle. We must cleanse that bottle. And the cleansing and the washing of the bottle means every influence of an evil spirit, every influence of a traditional spirit, every influence of a denominational spirit, every influence of the human spirit, everything must go. You wash the bottle, you cleanse the bottle, and the word of the Lord will take supremacy, and the spirit of the Lord will take the overcoming, overwhelming power in your life. He says, as for me, this is my covenant. With them says the Lord, my spirit, not another spirit, my spirit that is upon them and my words which I have put in their mouth. You know, if you come to the presence of the Lord and you stay in the presence of the Lord, and you yield and surrender, submit to the Lord. Like he put his word in the mouth of Moses. And he said, my word is in your mouth. I've sent you to Pharaoh. Take that word. Go with that word. And tell Pharaoh, this is my word. Eventually, he'll let Israel go. Jeremiah, the word in his mouth. And that is what he took with him, the word in his mouth. And then he was able to speak to the nation and do the will of God and fulfill the calling of God upon his life. It's what in your mouth. It's what in your heart. It's what in your mind. It's what in your memory. That whenever you speak the word that the Lord have put there and you have received the word, internalized the word, and you live by the word, that is what gives you the power and the manifestation of the outpouring in your life. And it says, it shall not depart out of your mouth. And it says, no, out of the mouth of thy seed. No, out of the mouth of thy seed, because says the Lord from henceforth and forever. Remember, remember it's the word and the spirit that work together. If you reject the word, the spirit cannot work. If you forget the word, the spirit cannot work. If you concentrate on your own traditional past words, the spirit that wants to do something new in your life and through your life cannot work. The word and the spirit. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time, any time, any time, lest at any time we should let them sleep. He says everything we've heard, the word of his promise, the word of his power, the word of prophecy, the word of his prediction, and the word that comes personally to us from his word, go, and I will go with you. It's when we will not that let that word sleep. The watch of repentance. We've heard we must turn away from everything and anything that's against the word and the will of God. When we get, give heed to the word of repentance, that's when you'll walk with us. The word of correction. 
as the disciples were asking who is greater, who is number one, who is going to lead the others, and Jesus said, they do that in the world, it shall not be so among you. When we listen to his word of correction, that shall not be so among you. That lifestyle shall not be so among you. That careless living shall not be so among you. He says, we, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. The word of his promise, tarry in Jerusalem until the power comes upon you. It's when we listen to that word. And we ought to give the more honesty to the things which you have heard. The word of his promise. The word of the great commission. Go into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. And he says, behold, I am with you until the end of the world. Go touch the life of that neighbor. Go have compassion on them. And tell them what the Lord has done for you. When we listen to that word of commission. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time, careless time. Lest at any time, habitual time. Lest at any time, the time of a carefree attitude. Lest at any time, we should let them sleep. Look at verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. In verse 3, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Look at verse 4, that's where we're going. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. That's how he works with us. When we do not let the words we have heard slip away from us, and we're totally submissive and giving to that word, he has given to us. God also bearing the witness with signs and wonders. I pray from henceforth, from today, that word will work with you. He has said through you, he will cast out devils. Through you, he will save souls. Upon this rock, I build my church. He will use you to build the church. And what you build for his glory. What he cooperates with you to build. Nothing will pull it down. No one will pull it down. And nobody will be able to pull you down. Higher. Higher. I see you there. I said, I see you there. No one will be able to pull you down in Jesus' name. We submit to the word of the Lord. And we submit to the spirit of the Lord. And you are so high. And from the high mountain, you are ministering to the needs of the people. Power will walk through you. And the opportunity you have at your own time will not pass you by. The working of the Spirit through his servants. Number three now, we're looking at the willingness and the zeal by the Spirit. The willingness of the people that are filled with the Spirit of God. And then you are walking in the vineyard of the Lord. On the field of evangelism. In the ministry of edification. And then the willingness is always there. Go talk to Ahab. Ahab. Lord, I am tired now. Send another person. 
like the people who always retreat from assignment, they never make any mark in their generation. Go talk to Jezebel there. Lord, you know the history of Jezebel? Killed that one. Paralyzed that one. Made that other one dumb. He cannot speak anymore. Finished other minister. And you are sending me? <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Send another person. If it's not you, who will do it? When you are not willing. Because he has sent you to Pharaoh. When you are not willing. Because he has sent you to Nebuchadnezzar. When you are not willing. Because you think there's a lion in the way. When you are not willing. Because you say no other prophet has stood before Jezebel. How can I do that? When you are not willing, he cannot walk with you. But when you say, save me, Lord, and I shall be saved. Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Send me, Lord, and I will go. You will go. You know, I was invited somewhere. And God was so good. He didn't tell me what I will meet there when I get there. And you know, when you are ignorant, you're happy. When you don't know who will be there to meet you on the way, you're happy. So I didn't know. And I, I went in my simplicity. And in my submission, and we got to that village. Well, we're going to evangelize. But during the day before the evening meeting, I'm talking about some years ago, not now, when, you know, everywhere I go now, because of, you know, different kinds of people that might push me or pull me or whatever, and I'm getting older, I don't have the strength of uh, the teenagers that they push me, I push them. Now they can push me, so people will not allow them to push me, so they surround me. But at that time, thank God, I was alone. I was a happy young man. I wasn't even married at that time. Just anywhere I want to go, I just go. When I want to come back for my Monday Bible study, I go back to Lagos. Free. You'll be free. And so we got to this village. We wanted to evangelize that house. And we saw a woman dancing around a pot. And the person who went with me said, let's preach to her. I said, no, no, no. Let her finish. And so she finished her going around the porch. I said, madam, what are you doing? I knew, but I acted, you know, I, I told you I was a young man at that time. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm worshipping my God. I said, this is your God. And she had a boy totally paralyzed sitting down there watching the mother dance around the porch. I said, see what your God has done to your child. Paralyzed. Cannot stand up. Cannot do anything. So I said, if you come to my God, this child will rise up and walk. He said, no, no, no. I said, take that idol. Smash it on the ground. I'll pay for the child. He said, no. What if you pray for my child and my child does not get up and then I've already smashed my idol? Nothing remains. And I told her, I am a teacher my students do not dictate to me what to teach. You are my student today. And I tell you, take that pot, smash it on the ground. And the woman did that. And I didn't, I wasn't speaking their language. And there was no interpreter to interpret my prayer in a dynamic way. And the boy, I think uh, he was less than 10 years of age. He didn't understand all the command I was giving in prayer. And I said, boy, 
in the name of Jesus. I didn't touch him. I didn't pull him up. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the boy looked up at me like this. And he got up. I said, walk. And he started walking. After that, I spoke to the woman and said, if your God has done this, I abandon idol, I'm going to serve the Lord. And we kept on. I said, when is your husband coming back? He said he went to the farm. He will soon come back. I said, well, wait. And then we kept on talking to the woman, teaching her on discipleship, teaching her on how to follow the Lord. And then the husband came back. I remember. I don't, I wasn't speaking like I'm speaking now. My grammar English has improved. And my way of talking to people has improved a little. But at that time, single man, not married, not having any woman to say, say this word, don't say that word. Totally single. And so the man came. And I said, man, look at your boy. The Lord has sealed your boy. And your boy has come to the kingdom of God. And then I said, look at your wife. She's come into the kingdom of God. Hear what I said. Remember, my language was not polished at that time. I said, you are the only black leg and scapegoat in this family now. I said, you are the only goat in the house now. They are converted. And you know, the Lord did not mind my language. I told you yesterday that Satan doesn't understand good English or good French. And the Lord doesn't penalize you for the grammar you don't know. All he needs is the word and the spirit inside you. And the man said, I will not be a scapegoat. Tell me what to do. I told him about Jesus. He surrendered. He was born again. The woman born again. The boy born again and killed. And the man now born again. What the Lord has given me, I give you. The word and the spirit. And the freedom. To do what the Lord has called you to do. And not to be under any control of any other spirit. And you say, Lord, here I am. I have your word. I have your spirit. And I go in the power of the word, in the power of the spirit. Everywhere you go, the Lord will walk with you. You will not fail. I see Peter and John, and they are running in to the place where the women said, we have not found his body. And Peter was running ahead. And then John, still coming from behind, he ran past him. He saw that, uh, he saw that empty place. Maybe I've started before you. And see me now the way I walk and the way I run. Come on, run past me here. Run. 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 Stand up and start running. Stand up and start running. You will run. You will walk. What have I done? You will do more than I have done. Get up. And say, Lord, I come. Your word in me. Your spirit in me. Your power in me. Don't just trot or walk. Run. Come now. Tell the Lord. Whether you are married or you are not married. Forget about that. Even those who are not married should be stronger. You'll be freer. And you should look unto the Lord alone and say, Lord, I will. 
Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Don't let marriage stop you. Don't let a woman stop you. Don't let any man stop you. Don't let anybody's private agenda stop you. Arise and walk. Arise and move that mountain. Arise and do what the Lord has called you to do. Walk. Walk for the Lord. And move for the Lord. And run for the Lord. He has set a race before you. And he has said, this is what you do. And with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, you say what the Lord has put in your mouth to say. Walk for the Lord. And surrender your heart and surrender everything before the Lord. Remember, you must be free. If they tie rope on your head, on your on your legs, if they try to muscle your mouth, if they try to stop you, if you are stoppable, the word of God has not filled your heart. If you are stoppable, the spirit of God has not filled your heart. Arise and walk for the Lord. Arise and run for the Lord. Arise and do what he has called you to do. Free. 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 That nothing holds you back. Nothing holds you down. Tell the Lord, here I am. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my precious Savior, I surrender all. Give your heart fully to him. Your willingness fully to him. And give all your mind and all your submission completely to him. He will walk with you. He will walk through you. If you drop all the sick that will pull you down or pull you back. If you center your affection and your love on him, on him alone. You say, Lord, who do I know on earth? Who do I know in heaven? Who do I know in the country? Who do I know around me? That will slow me down. That will pull me down. That will do anything that shouldn't, that will not allow me to do all that I need to do. What is he? What is she? Who are they? Who is he? You caught all the rope that ties you down. And you say, Lord, I am ready. Ready to take my flight. Ready to walk by faith. Ready with the arms of grace and faith. Ready to go and to do. Ready to accomplish everything you call me to accomplish. I am willing. I am ready in the day of your power in these days of revival in these days of working for the lord i am willing i am willing i am willing i am ready and the lord will walk with you the word in your mouth the spirit in your life full of the world and full of the spirit and you do the work of the Lord. Surrender unto him. Surrender unto him. Fully. Without reservation. Without any rival. 
and without any fear. He has not given you the spirit of fear, the spirit of timidity. He gives you the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Free. Free. Are you free? If you're afraid of anything, you're not free. If you're afraid of a man, you're not free. If you're afraid of a woman, you're not free. If you're afraid of Jezebel, she brought that one down. She brought that one down. She brought that one down. And you're afraid of her, she will bring you down. You're not free. If you're afraid of Ahab, he brought that one down. He destroyed the very stamina and the power of those other prophets. If you're afraid of them, you're not free. Lord, here I am. The power that makes the preacher free, give it to me. The power that makes a servant of the Lord free, give it to me. The power that makes a man and a woman to do the will of God without modifying that will and without carefully doctoring that will, give that spirit to me. Living with power, walking with power, running with power. Your day has now come. Your day has now come. No man will stop you. No woman will stop you. No Jezebel will stop you. No Ahab will stop you. Where are they? They are down. Amen. Amen. The Lord has answered your prayer. Everything you spoke about in your prayer and you surrendered yourself, use me. It will go beyond your prayer. Remember my story? Make the story your own. Where are you? Father, in Jesus' name. Every brother, every sister here. Every servant of God here. The man, the woman. Fill their heart with your word in Jesus' name. Any word that will not work wonders, take away from their mouth. Any word that will take them back to the bad old days of no power, no strength, no anointing, take that unprofitable word away. Every spirit that had not given abundant life and success and power, take that spirit away in Jesus' name. Feel every heart with the word of power. Let your word of prophecy be fulfilled in every life. The word that will produce wonders in every life. Give everyone the wonder of your word. Every brother, every sister. You turn this way, wonders. You turn that way, wonders. You carry the wonders of God with you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Your bottle, your heart, your soul be totally washed and entirely clean. The Spirit of God is poured upon your life. You will act extraordinary. 
you will speak extraordinary. You will accomplish extra the extraordinary. Your life, your interaction, your touching other people, you're walking everywhere. Henceforth, will have the exploits. No fear in your heart. No doubt in your heart. And there is no unbelief in your heart. You'll be, you will be like that little stone in the hand of the son of David. And where David said that stone, every Goliath came down. You are that little stone. You are that instrument. You are that weapon in the hand of Jesus. Through you and with you, he'll bring down every Goliath in your way. Arise, go, walk. Great things will happen through you. The Lord will be walking with you every day. The same story you have heard from me. That story is transferred into your life. Stand, don't sit. Go, don't draw back. Preach, don't keep quiet. Power goes with you everywhere. It is done in your life, in your ministry, in your calling. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Pubu, amen. Pumoa, amen. Pumu, choose, amen. Amen. Church, amen. 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 We thank God for how far he has brought us. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord and we thank you also for your cooperation. Now, that's the end of the first section, the morning section, and we will come back for the second section in the evening, it will start exactly 5 p.m. But if we could come earlier than that uh, to start training on our own, so that exactly 5, we can start and finish early as this morning session, we have finished early. The good God will help us as we do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Shall we thank God and bless the name of the Lord for all the messages we have heard? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have used to Lord to feed us this morning. We appreciate you, Lord, for the Lord that the mighty minister Thank you, Lord, even this word that I've heard today. Before we ask God the Lord, all these words are said. As the pastor said, it will be our story. I want to see it in my life. Are you watching in our churches? Shall we pray? Uh, 
we bless you lord because you have answered the prayer of your servant upon our life and the prayer we also have prayed and we ask that these words we have heard to be permanent in our heart and you grant us the grace to meditate on it day by day in jesus name amen we have brought the first section to an end we are grateful for that and we pray that you grant us the strength to come back for the second session in the evening and we ask that lord you would answer the request, the desires of your children in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we share the grace and fellowship, I'd like to ask um, the pastor, the senior pastor, the senior pastor, the announcement of giving. Pastor, just pastor, in that place by 115. Yeah. What time do you want to be there? Uh, there's no hello. Yes, yeah, sir. There's no special announcement, and we just uh, come early this evening and uh, to start Thank the remaining part of it. Thank you, sir. The grace of fellowship. God bless you. See you in the evening section. Thank you, sir. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. 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 Bye.
of the journey that we have embarked, we are embarking on, the plow that we've laid our hands upon, that there should be no looking back. I pray, Lord, speak to our hearings and help us to be better than what we were as we came today, today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we are looking at um, lesson 159. Am I right? The last lesson, <clears throat> the last lesson we have in the booklet. However, there, is, there are some little adjustments. I believe we got the in the WhatsApp. Praise the Lord. Today we are looking at danger of compromise in the church. Danger of compromise in the church. Our memory verse is taken from Revelation chapter 2 verse 16. Let's open there. Are we there now? Let us read it together. One to go. Repent or else. On to thee quickly. Revelation chapter 2, verse 16. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Our text is taken from that same Revelation chapter 2, verses, one, verses 12 to 17. Verses 12 to 17, chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. Uh, can a fast reader please help us to go through it, read through it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. The angel of the church in Pagamos write, This thing said, He which art the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not to deny my faith. Even in those days wherein Hadipas was my faithful man, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast dared them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who thought Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to hit things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly. I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an hair, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to heat of the healing manner, and will give him a white stone, and a stone a new name, written which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Amen. Yeah. So we see that. Uh, in these verses that we have read today, we have Christ introducing himself and talking to the church in Pecamos. And the introductions, the message uh, to the church follows a general format, which, uh, which are one, the mention of the addressee, the angel of the church, and number two, self-disclosure in relations to the message. And number three, we see commendation. We also see diagnosis of inherent problems. These were the steps whenever the angel of the Lord, of, of whenever Christ is trying to approach a church or the church of that time, it follows this pattern and makes them to understand and also prescribe a solution, this prescription of solution. He also promised reward for the overcomers. 
for those that overcome. And he also exhort, exhort everyone that has an ear to hear and make use of the message from the Spirit of God. So we have the message today as the church, as a church, that there is danger and compromise. This did not only happen in the church in Pecamos or Smyrna or Sardis or whichever church that was addressed at the time that Jesus Christ was sending his spirit to approach John and where he was and told him about each of these churches. Yet, I mean, today we, have a, we are in a church and God is as well sending his spirit to warn the church to everyone that has an ear because he is coming back again. So when the book of Revelation was written, Pecamos had been the, an, uh, the Asia's capital, a, a, a Pecan city and acclaimed cultural center in Pecamos very highly educated environment. They had, uh, 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 they, they had the seat, the throne of Satan in that place. And whilst Smyrna had the synagogue of Satan, Pecamos was the capital to, to have the seat of uh, the throne of Satan. The synagogue where they worship uh, was where we are trying to address, look at today. In the scripture, we see that compromise is to do something that is demeaning. Compromise is to do something demeaning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us quickly read at, uh, go to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 2 and see what God expects us to, be, to do. Romans chapter 2. If you see it, please, please you are permitted to read. Romans. Chapter 2, verse 12. So, chapter 12, or rather, verse 2. Romans chapter 12. What God expects us. Yes. Yes. Expect from us. Chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God doesn't expect us to compromise in any form. He wants us to, Christ expects us to hate what he hates and love what he loves. But the situation is what we are looking at and seeing that children of God, you have been born again. Do you, do you still stand? John chapter, uh, first John chapter uh, 2 verse 15, love not the world. So in, in the scripture, compromise is to do something that is demeaning or contra, uh, contravenes the Christian faith and principles of righteousness or to be, co to be conformed to the world, to be conformed to the world. John, first John chapter two, verse 15 to 17 says that we should not love the world. Quickly, we read that verse, those verses of the scripture. John, first John, if you see it, please. As well, you can read. First John. First John chapter two, verses fifteen to chapter two, verses fifteen. Love not uh, the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the Lord, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Praise the Lord. 
God expects us not to love the world. There's compromise in the church that calls Christ to come and approach the church of Pecamos. He has well recognized that the, the fact that they were in the place that is full of uh, some kind of worship that is not acceptable, idol worship. And this is the church in a place that has the throne of Satan. A church, a place that has, has the seat of Satan and the synagogue, of, uh, the synagogue to worship Satan. Yet, Christ expects that church to be able to stand, to overcome compromise. There's likeliness that there's going to be a compromise. By the time they look away from Christ, by the time they look away from uh, the sacrifice that Christ paid on the, on the cross, definitely there's going to be compromise. And so God expects us today, even as he warned them in that time of revelation, that they should stand and that there's a reward, there's a new name that is going to be given to such individual that stands to the end. God is, says, God is giving us the same message today. So let us quickly answer this first question. What is compromise? Can somebody give us an answer? Compromise. Deviation yes. from the Deviation from yes, the system. It's an act whereby the truth and the conviction of the word of God that we have is being lowered. Praise the Lord. The truth and the conviction is being lowered, adjusted to conform to the norms, to the societal acceptance. And so that is compromise, yielding and accepting the doctrines of Nicolaitans. The, the, the Nicolaitans taught that one saved is forever saved. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter the life you live. And so, we, but we know very well that the, the soul that sinned, the scripture says what? It shall die. Once it's appointed unto man, yeah. and after that, judgment. So if there is compromise, there's, there's, there's death. But those that stand, God will give reward. Now let's quickly look at uh, first point. Revelation of Christ's judicial authority and commendation of the Pecamos church. Christ has the authority and by him shall the world be judged. Christ has the judicial authority. His word is like a two-edged sword. So he came. Now let us look at verse 2, verse 12 and 13 of our text. Our text is Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. And to the angel of the church of Pecamos writes, this thing said he, which had the sharp sword with two edges, I know thy works. And where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days, where, where in Antipas was my faithful Matthias, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. You see, God knows everything. Christ knows everything. He knows everything and he comes with the sword. Now, the things, uh, the, the scripture says, these things said he that had the sharp sword, that has the sharp sword. Christ introduced himself to the church in Pecamos as he which had the sharp sword with two edges. What does that mean? He disclosed himself as against compromising, evil tolerating church. 
He came with a sword in his mouth. The sword is the word of judgment. The words of judgment to the compromising church. The, 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 the anger of God and the judgment of God against the compromising and the, the church that tolerates unrighteousnesses. His introduction reveals him as a firm. He's firm. He's, and he's also a frightening judge who will not spare any compromise, whether in the church or in an individual. So the sharp two edged sword from his mouth is the stern word of judgment, which he will judge, that will feel that will that will fall on the sinners and backsliders. The stern word of judgment that will fall on the sinners and backsliders. But here also we see Christ as he approaches the church. He did not come straight condemning the church. He did not come straight condemning those people, even though they were trying, making an attempt in the environment that they were. He also pointed, uh, he, he was also able, he was also ready to commend them. So before pointing out areas of compromise in the church, Christ commended its faithfulness in the city where Satan sits through or throne is, as we saw in Revelation and the text that we read. The text that we read says in verse 13, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou hast hold fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, these people were able to stand, despite the fact that some boys were being slain. We saw the other time that Polycarp, the church pastor, was asked to deny Christ. And he said, for these 86 years, I have walked with him. He has walked with me. He has been with me. He has not failed me. How can I deny my savior? And so he did not deny, but he did not deny the savior until he was killed. And so Christ commended that. Some were able to stand because they saw that this man stood. This man remained faithful. This man as did not compromise, despite the fact that he was threatened with death, and actually they killed him. Look at the three Hebrew children facing fire. This is something some of, some, some of us would have said, okay, it's just bowing down. When I bow down today, I'll go and repent. And, and let me escape this fire. Fire is right in front of me. They have, they have, they have increased the intensity of the fire seven times more, about to be, to be thrown in there. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benego refused to compromise. They said, I, we, we, we are not careful to answer you in this thing. If God cannot save us, let it be. And so, what are those things that makes you to compromise, makes the believers to compromise today? The believers should be able to learn credence, learn from the past, learn from those that are able to stand. And the promise is right there, the promise of heaven, the promise of the new name, the promise that we know and we read every time which we read every time, we understand every time. So before pointing out areas of compromise in, uh, in this church, Christ commanded them. He told them, yes, I know that you are in the midst of the place that Satan is highly in control, so to say. The, the whole lot of people 
a higher level, uh, I mean, percentage of people are worshiping idol. And so Satan is in that place. The seat of Satan is in that place. The throne of Satan is, uh, is that, in that place. The synagogue of Satan is in that place. Yet you are able to stand. Though Satan was uh, enthroned there, believers there were steadfast. They were upholding Christ's name and, and cause. They did not deny their faith. But what was their faith? Their faith is that Christ is the only Savior. Their, their faith is that they cannot commit the sin that the other the people I were committing. Their faith was because it started when they repented of their sins and yielded their lives to walk with, with, with God. So in the face of opposition, they were able to stand. Even when people, they were, uh, they were, people were being killed. Believers learned from Christ's introduction and commendation. Here we always has a message for every, uh, for the church. He always has a message for the church. Christ always has a message for the church. Number two, he is the church. He is the church of all. Number three, all judgment will be based on his words. The sharp, the sharp sword with two edges is the judgment, the word of judgment. He is also all-knowing, omniscience. He knows all. He did not only know uh, their works, he also knew the environment in which they were, their prevailing conditions. And they knew, knew, he knew their environment, he knew their situations. And so he knew that they were doing all they could to stand. He also, uh, is, he also every good works done by believers, noticed or unnoticed by men, will be commended and rewarded. We learn from Christ also that leaders over his flocks should always seek him from true, for true assessment of the state of the church. He has all the wisdom, he has all the knowledge, he has all the understandings of situations and individuals. And so before uh, the leader take the decision against or for any individual should learn to le uh, lean upon Christ. Before correction or rebukes are made, it may be necessary to recognize these, to re recognize areas, area or area a person is doing well. Number eight, a believer should hold on to Christ despite trial, temptations, persecutions, or martyrdom. Number nine, believers who are determined Prayerful and watchful can still be righteous and keep the faith in, sin, uh, in a sinful uh, domain invested, uh, inv and invested areas. We quickly go to uh, point number three. We have very few time. Number three, uh, point number two, introduction and commendation of the church in Pecamos. As we can read from Revelation chapter 2 verse 14, 14 to 16, says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, and who, and taught Balak's 